Hi book lovers. Today I want to talk to you about wordless picture books. I know some people love them, some people hate them, some people are confused by them. Uh, I know that for text literacy they aren't very, um, you know, effective, but most certainly for visual literacy they are stunning. I think it's important to remember that visual literacy is just as important as text literacy because the text literacy of course is wonderful for education and growth and interaction and being able to communicate effectively. It's vital, it's freedom. Uh, but visual literacy is an emotive response. It's our emotional intelligence. It's the way we interpret things. Um, it's the joy we get from image and being able to decode the way image works uh, is, is a huge skill actually and it's something we can't underestimate which is why we need the arts. It's why we need art. It's why we need music, dance um, and certainly illustration. And uh, yeah, I have a deep passion for these books and I want to show you why. So I have quite a few to show you. Uh, so let's just dive in. So the first one is called Where's Walrus by Stephen Savage and this is published by Scholastic. It's an absolute joy. It's uh, basically, you can see here, this walrus that uh, looks a little bit like a human. Beautiful end papers. And I love the divine matte paper, the soft colouring with the pops of red. It's just beautiful. We have a little walrus wink to start off with. And then we follow this walrus in his, uh, in captivity. And one day he decides, I'm jack of this, I'm out of here. <laughs> and he heads off. Um, look, it's just a lot of fun, this book. It just follows the exploits of this walrus um, and uh, in his attempts to uh, foil the zoo catcher, the zookeeper zoo catcher, um, through the book it just... <laughs> building a brick wall. I mean the humour, it's just, there's a language in image. We all know the old thousand, you know, words in an image uh, concept and it is so true. We just get so much joy from a single image and when they're done very cleverly, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. Um, and of course through the book, this walrus uh, continues to evade capture because he doesn't want to go back to the zoo. Um, and I do love the retro stylings of it, the really simple illustrations, the colourways. It's humorous, it's accessible for really little kids. And like all of these amazing wordless picture books, it has such a sophistication in the narrative and even the tiniest tots can get what's going on. And very best of all, they can... Um, have their own interpretation of what's happening. I know we can have that with text literacy as well, but more so in image because it allows us to interpret things in such deep and such meaningful and visceral ways that are unique to almost each one of us. So I just love the subtlety of these books. I'm a big subtlety person. All right, the next one I really love is Pool, and this is by Ji Hyun Lee. It is published by Chronicle, uh, and it's actually another one. I, uh, follow on from this. I have it somewhere. I'll have to show you another time. I, I have no idea where it is in the piles. Uh, but I absolutely oh, love Ji Hyun's work. It's just superb. Look at these end papers here. And it's essentially just a story about a young lad that goes to a swimming pool. Beautiful, soft illustrations. And there is the swimming pool. pool. Uh, invitingly cool and luscious before him and then this happens <laughs> oh I love it you can imagine what's gonna happen can't you <laughs> it's just genius it's it's absolute genius beautifully crafted illustrations Love the monochrome aspect of the illustrations and then further down the track, I'm not going to reveal all of these because they're so special you need to look them up. Um, further down the track we see that some enchantment happens and we get these wonderful pops of colour um, and again the, the warmth and friendship to be found in, without words is just so precious. If you think of a really great movie, oftentimes when I'm writing books I think about this and it's a big frustration of mine. 
I wish sometimes I could just show with a moving image what I want to say. Sometimes I think words are just, I don't know, they're not as powerful as action and as visuals. And I get frustrated when I have to come up with some words that are just not enough, not subtle enough, not nuanced enough, not powerful enough that we can get uh, from an image. And it's a big frustration of mine. I get it all the time. I get it with um, junior fiction. I get it with my um, picture books. I wish I could rely on moving image more because just a look, a glance, a move of someone's head, um, the reaction on their face, uh, it has such power to it. And that's what wordless books do so well if they're done cleverly and um, most of them are. Right, the next one. I've shown you these before. This is Susie Lee. Incredible. Uh, love, love, love her work. This one is Wave and I have showed it to you before in uh, one of my other videos. You must check them out. Um, but it's essentially, again, just about, love the long format, about a little girl who goes to the beach and has this relationship with the ocean. Beautifully, beautifully done. Just so clever. And please don't underestimate the ability of children to understand this or to get the nuance of this. I think we really underestimate, even for the smallest child, Children may not be able to uh, actually verbalise what they're feeling or getting from text or image, most certainly when they're very young, but do not underestimate their ability to feel it and to know it in some way, um, even if they can't express that. And indeed, a lot of children express themselves through art much more easily than through uh, written word. Uh, you can see here this interplay. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. It's got lots of drama. Kids love the beach. We all love the beach. Um, beautiful book. Uh, she's also done one called Shadow, which is exquisite. And this one again is about a little girl. I believe it's the same girl. And uh, she's in her room playing and reflected. Um, I love that the book opens this way. Yeah. Reflected in uh, her play is... Um, this shadow here of what she's doing so for example you can see here that she's got her hands up making a bird but then we actually do have the shadow of a bird and as the book progresses things start to shift and change um, to add more imaginative reflection and that continues on oh. no words see told you no words that continues on through this exquisite book. I highly recommend it. Again, it needs no words. I was talking in my production video recently. I was showing you Mamie and towards the end of the book, she's preparing to meet the fairies and she's buzzing around. She's making fairy bread and fairy cakes and fairy stories and all these fairy related things. And I actually had written a text that was quite pretty and that was sort of to go with that scene. And in the end, my wonderful editor, Evie, Tanelli and I just thought this we don't need this we don't need these words so much more powerful without the words another one from Susie Lee mirror mirror love 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 this one um, is particularly powerful because it's a very emotive story the child in the story is um, extremely emotional and uh, lonely and again, well, is she lonely? What's your interpretation of the story? What's your child's interpretation of the story? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, again, no words. And as the story progresses, she starts to interact with her reflection um, and then things start to get really magical. And I absolutely love how Susie has literally done, you know, create an image and stamp the book closed and we've got a, a, a mirror image on the other side. It's beautiful. Love the orange and yellow colourways. Really subtle, divine, artsy but accessible. Adore, adore her books. So please look those up. All right, this next one I want to show you is by an incredible fellow called Istvan Banyai. This one is published by Viking. And apologies, the um, Susie Lee books are published by... Chronicle, of course. All right, so this is Viking. This fellow is so, so incredible. This book is beautiful. It's small. I somehow wish it was larger so I could dive in a little bit more, but it's fine. It's fine as is. I also wish it was matte paper, whinging again. All right, 
So basically this is an exquisite peek into the minutia and the tiniest parts of the world that expands into the largest parts of the world. So here we could imagine it could be anything, it could be an amoeba, it could be you know someone's um, clothing, we don't know what it is. And as we pull back we see of course that it's a cockerel. We pull back more and we see that the cockerel is out the window and then we pull back into the building and out into the farm, into the yard and on we go and then we realise it's a play scene and it's so special. I won't show you all but it goes out and out and out and in such surprising ways. It's just so, oh, I love this. I won't tell you what that came from, but oh my God, it's just so brilliantly clever. And um, I particularly love too how we end up with this single dot. And I wonder if you can guess what that dot represents. I bet you can. All right, this next one is by Aaron Becker, Journey. You've probably seen this one before. I think this is Candlewick, yeah, and uh, you can see I've covered some of my books in plastic. My aim is to cover all of them. <laughs> I'll be 107 by the time that happens. Uh, and beautifully, more of a traditional um, style of illustration, but really gorgeously done, beautifully atmospheric, lovely contrast with the images. And I adore, adore the little pop of red that just brings focus to the scene. And that's another thing about great wordless picture books is they rely on the visual to create moments of interest, um, to bring the attention to poignant parts of the narrative so that the narrative is easier to follow along. And you can see here the red scooter, the red kite, and this follows this little girl. Look, look at the red the red drawing on the wall, she draws this door and she disappears inside <gasps> and enters this magical, magical world. So this is a true adventure story, loving the green and the red and how she, you know, draws her own little boat so she can continue on, a bit like Harold's crown, uh, crayon. Um, and look at this beautiful city that she finds. Really, really, really special book. Lots of detail for kids to explore and, uh, and that also allows one to expand on the narrative as they search through the images. Barbara Lemon, I love her work. Uh, this is called Train Spot and it's Train Stop. And this is HMC Co. Horton Mifflin Company. Adore the illustrations, very folksy, beautiful colour palette. And I actually have another train book similar to this that's wordless as well. Um, and it's also about a little girl that jumps on a uh, train and travels somewhere. So of course, picture books are a journey, aren't they? And uh, this is a literal journey, but so subtly and beautifully done. Look at that, there she is, entering a new place. And just the subtlety of the imagery. So for example, what do you think is happening here? She's stopping, she's looking around. Of course the train has stopped, hasn't it? So we don't need the literal interpretation saying the train has stopped. We know that she's been looking out the window, suddenly things have changed. We're presuming that she's reached her destination. Um, loving the uh, cinematic pulling in and pulling out of the different uh, scenes and the vignettes here. And on she goes on her beautiful journey. Lovely, lovely book. This one you might have seen, actually I think this is a Barbara as well. Yeah, this is another Barbara book. Love this one. This is about museum. Um, this is also um, Horton Mifflin. Oh, I wish the end papers were there, but it's still pretty blue. And this is a museum trip. Gorgeous illustrations. Just beautiful. Really, really um, folksy and gorgeous colourings. So here we have a class going to the museum. And we have, as you can well see there, in the lovely bright red top to differentiate him from the other children, um, a reluctant museum goer. Uh, yeah, just, you know, just beautiful. Again, full scene, a uh, little vignette, and full scene. Suddenly he realises he's lost. What on earth is he going to do? He finds a hidden door and uh, begins to explore this beautiful, beautiful place. Again, no words needed, particularly in a museum where it's all visual. 
All right, this one is called Footpath Flowers by John Arno Lawson and illustrated by Sydney Smith. Now, I wanted to show you this one because you may ask how on earth could someone write a wordless picture book? How could an author create one? Well, actually, they could do it very, very easily. It's not at all difficult to do. You need to have a concept, obviously, when you're creating a book and um, an illustrator most certainly is going to create the pictures, but you do need some kind of narrative. And unless you're a uh, author illustrator who's creating both the narrative and the image, then absolutely you can have someone who comes up with the concept for this. Uh, Amelia McEnany did that recently uh, with a book illustrated by Philip Bunting called Bad Crab the Scholastic. This is a local uh, author and it's just beautifully done. I think it has like four words in it. It's virtually wordless and uh, yeah and of course she came up with the concept and um, uh, the uh, narrative. So absolutely it's doable. All right so Footpath Flowers is a gorgeous take on modern life looking for you know in the big city where there's not much foliage and not many trees um, coming across these beautiful little snippets of greenery um, along the little girl's walk with her dad. Gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations. Really, really beautifully constructed this book. Um, the deep shadowing, the contrast is just divine. And again, these lovely little um, poignant moments where we've just, we just see, you know, life is continuing on as normal, but then we have dad with the little girl in the pop of red. So we focus, that's where the focus of the narrative is drawn to. And then as the story progresses, we get more colour. Again, not going to reveal what happens, but that's another beautiful one. This one is by Henry Cole. This is Spot the Cat, Simon and Schuster. Love the detail of these illustrations. Look here. Just gorgeous. This has a real, despite the fact that it's monochrome and grey, it has a real warmth to it. It has a real cosiness. Here we open with a little boy in his book and Spot the Cat is on the windowsill and out she goes looking for some mischief and adventure. Have a look at this. How beautiful is this scene of the uh, of the streetscape with every little brick and tile um, penciled in just divine and what I love about um, Henry's work is that you have to find you have to look and search for the characters here okay and that brings a whole other element to the narrative doesn't it my goodness has she left the house what's happened has the boy noticed she's gone and you're gonna look all over this scene and see the parallel narratives of other people's lives as you're searching for the thread of this particular story of the boy and his cat um, there she is down the bottom there, you can see. She's on her way, baby. <laughs> Just love, love, love it. Love this everyday urban scape, you know, with these uh, uh, garbage trucks and flower markets and, you know, and the moment that the little boy goes, hang on a second, where is my little puddy cat? And he goes ahead and prints out lost uh, posters and the story goes on. Beautiful book, love that one. Uh, you may have heard of David Weisner, and this one is called Flotsam. It's published by Clarion, and his illustrations are just superb. The, it's a lovely satiny paper, but it works really well with this illustration style. It opens on the beach here. Look at that title page. I mean, you know, wow, adore, adore. And don't you love this? Look, look at that opening there with the eye focused in on this little hermit crab. Just genius. Very much like um, Graham Bass's work. That sort of wondrous, um, more traditional style of illustration, but that sort of um, magical wonderment. Uh, and then, of course, we pull back to this beautiful full scene and then we see that a boy is actually looking at the little crab in his hand. And it goes on with these luscious, water scenes aren't they exquisite beautiful beach colors and divine light on the, on the child's back here um and yeah <laughs> what do you think this might be uh, mm, interesting stuff something magical 
just a wonderful story adventure and I love the little cartoon style pockets here of the different things that are happening and that's allowing David to uh, progress the story really quickly and not have to fill the book um, with a really really lengthy narrative so having those little pockets and having them all together at once is a wonderful way to progress the story quickly. All right this one is called Thunderstorm by Arthur Geisert and uh, this is Enchanted Line Books, beautiful matte paper, divine colourways, very American style illustration this, very folksy and uh, I love this one. I love it because even though it's wordless it does have a clock so you can see I'm calling it wordless there are words but it's literally just telling you the time so I'm classifying this as a wordless book because the narrative is fully visual uh, so it starts on Saturday afternoon July 15 at 12 15 p.m. and we see that this storm is coming and then it literally progresses through time and I love how he sliced things open so we can peek inside. You can see here the squirrels inside the tree and um, you know the sort of um, cross section here. You can see all the detail happening and the land below under the ground here. You can see the bunnies there in their little burrow. Just really beautifully done. The illustrations are just beautiful. Um, love, I've talked about this before, this cross section of buildings where children can um, take a peek inside and we can see here inside the barn that they're preparing because the storm is coming. Just wonderful, wonderful stuff and of course kapow, here comes this tornado and sheets and sheets of rain, getting the sheets off the line and on the story goes um, really dramatic book, really beautifully thought out, stacks and stacks of detail. Love it. All right, just a few more to go. This is exquisite. <laughs> this is called The Whale. It's by Ethan and Vita Murrow. It's by Big Picture Press. Love Big Picture Press. Love, have almost all of their books. The illustrations in this are to die for. You can see the detail and then of course on the back, look at the back there, really, really beautiful. Adore this cover. This is an exquisitely designed cover, hugely impactful. How could you see this and not want to pick it up? And this would appeal to children as much as adults. It would appeal to steampunk lovers as much as it would to classic uh, illustration lovers. It's just gorgeous. That lovely use of white space. This book um, is completely wordless but what I love about it is there's lots of little details in text as well. So newspaper clippings and signs and letters and announcements and all sorts of things that um, draw the, uh, the reader in and they can read more if they want to or they can just of course take of course giant whale a hoax um, or it's just, is it a giant whale or is it just a giant hoax. So anyone who reads this can decide on whether or not they want to dive into more details. So this is why wordless uh, books are great because they allow children who are younger, who are struggling with text or who are just not reading yet to enjoy a book just as much as someone who's older and can appreciate the subtlety just like the Pixar films when the adults are laughing at the parts the kids aren't getting and vice versa. Um, it's lovely to have that disparity between comprehension and that's what a wordless book does so well. And of course here you can see, look, just exquisitely, exquisitely illustrated. Oh, I mean, you know, this is just worth it alone just for the pictures, but it is a truly adventuresome, beautiful, dramatic story. Right, Once Upon a Snowstorm, this is a recent acquisition. This is by Richard Johnson and it's published by... Did I tell you who The Whale was published by? I did, big picture. This is Faber and Faber. And uh, again, you know me, I love matte paper. <laughs> this doesn't have it, but it does have that almost glassine style of paper. Can you see? It's not, it's not really gloss. It's like a almost, like when you touch it, you feel like there might be a sheet of acetate over the top. It's sort of luminous and uh, beautiful illustrations. Look, look really light filled and sparkling and gorgeous beautiful characters divine colorways and styling and then as the dad and his son adventure out into the snowstorm you can see here that the uh, snowflakes are actually reindeer 
really, really exquisitely done. A great Christmas book um, and love the little vignetting. Again, you know, because we don't have text in books like this, it's really important that we progress the narrative in some way and give movement to the story by such things. So having these vignettes where we actually go through uh, the uh, son letting go of the father's hand and what might happen to him. And then this incredibly powerful image at the bottom here where we have actually the boy on his own is absolutely chilling. Um, so from this warm, happy, I'm with dad, I'm safe, through to this sudden abandonment, <sighs> rushed with goosebumps. So that is the power of image. and We do not need words for that. Um, and then this is just about the story of the little boy adventuring off on his own. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, these two I'll just show you in tandem. These are by Mark Pett and they're with Simon and Schuster Kids. They're both wordless and they uh, follow the exploits. One is a little boy and his aeroplane and one is the girl on the bicycle. And they're actually done on a, I guess, um, I don't know, it's almost like a brown paper background which lends for glorious white overlay that I just love and it just follows these uh, children, this little girl, as she goes through saving up for a bicycle. There she is with her lemonade stand. So of course we can clearly see what she's planning on doing and why she's doing it. Uh, and uh, everything must go. There she is selling off all her toys, trying to raise enough money to get this bicycle. And again, I won't reveal too much as we go along, but it's just a gloriously subtle story, beautiful illustrations, and um, yeah, subtle uh, without being hammering you over the head with messaging. And uh, yeah, I won't reveal too much more. The other one is slightly different from memory. I haven't read this for a long, long time. I'm just going to check before I... Ah, yes, yes. I actually pitched this kind of book idea to one of my publishers years ago. I really, really wanted to do it, and she said no because she didn't think that children would be interested in seeing someone grow older. Um, and uh, can't disagree more. There are lots of successful books that have since done that, including um, Mem Fox and Freya Blackwood's new um, The Tiny Star. And uh, I wish I'd done it. But anyway, maybe down the track I can do that. So it's just a little boy who falls in love with his toy plane um, and has uh, various learnings and uh, life lessons as he moves through. Um, and then, of course, we see him getting older and becoming an old man. And very beautifully done because the passage of time is difficult to do and this book does that exquisitely. Okay, the last one I want to show you. But um, before I do, uh, I know that a lot of people worry about um, being able to story tell when they read wordless books. So I know an author friend of mine who's divine, I love her, uh, she once told me that she doesn't like them because she can't use them with her children. She can't read them to children and have that verbal narrative with them. And I totally get that and I understand that. I know it can be difficult. But I guess uh, we could look at wordless books in a way that allows us to be spontaneous, to sort of um, riff on a story, to, uh, you know, come up with our own interpretation and encourage children to do that and perhaps ask them questions along the way uh, and invent our own narrative as we go along. And even for older ch children, maybe key stage two children, you might consider uh, asking each child to have their own interpretation or to um, interpret one page or stand up and go through the book themselves and, and have their own interpretation or possibly even do that before you as the adult does that so that they don't end up mimicking what you've done. Um, but I just think they're a wonderful educational tool and I appreciate that the narrative is missing for a verbal story reading but I think that can be overcome. This last one is called Midnight Creatures A Pop-Up Shadow Search by Helen Friel and this one is published by Lawrence King, love Lawrence King, L-A-U-R-E-N-C-E. Oh, look at this. Okay, so this one is um, not completely wordless, but it relies on the visuals in that what happens is children are required to shine a torch or some kind of light through these scenes in order to discover things, or they can just hold it up as I'm doing. You can see here, 
that it looks like some kind of deer here in the little gap. Can you see that? Okay, sorry, my husband called, of course. Uh, okay, so yeah, so as I was saying, there's this lovely um, narrative that can be discovered through these images, through shining a torch and, and having these uh, uh, gorgeous images pop up on the wall or whether we just explore by looking through the forest and discover all these different creatures and um, we can make our own adventure narratives by uh, exploring this um, gorgeous book like we can with all of them. If you've not explored wordless books I really encourage you to. I think that uh, just um, diving in and exploring the imagery is a wonderful way to get nuance and meaning in ways that kids um, are are just not often exposed to. I mean, I know a lot of us try to expose children to art, but we don't really spend a huge amount of time uh, going over beautiful imagery in museums with kids. We might flit around and have a little play and have a look at art, but we don't really explore it as deeply as I think we should. And please look up visual literacy. I actually have a link on my blog that I can put in the notes below uh, that will take you to my thoughts on visual literacy and what I've learned and explored over the years and the vital elements and, and skill sets and development visual literacy plays with children even, uh, even in regard to text literacy. It is vital and it's great for children who communicate through emotional settings and through art, which we all do to a degree. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Just a small slice of wordless books and do, do look them up. I highly encourage you to. Have a wonderful day and I will be back with more soon. Take care. Bye.